Hello there. Welcome to the 31st episode of the SPS podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about the ego and we're going to talk about how it's not your enemy and it's something that you can direct in the right direction so you can get the right results. Let the credits roll. Welcome to the SPS podcast, the self performance strategies podcast. Unlocking the secrets to success and unlocking the secrets to self-performance so you can improve mentally, emotionally, and physically. The SPS podcast is brought to you by the Pro Accelerator Program, helping business owners and business leaders save at least 10 working hours a week, improve their focus, and make more money. If that sounds like something you're interested in, check out the show notes and follow the links. But let's now jump in to this episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 31 of the SPS podcast. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the ego is not your enemy. I wrote a blog post stroke Twitter thread about this a couple of years ago after reading Ryan Holiday's book, the idea of ego as the enemy was always in my mind. I started thinking about, is the ego the enemy? Do I have to kill the ego? And when you get into a bit of spiritual work, they talk about this as well. But then I came to my own opinion from reading the Stoics and other philosophies that the ego is a tool. The ego is not the enemy. The ego can stop you from growing and the ego can get in the way, but you can use the ego usefully. It is something that you can use to your benefit and it isn't always a negative thing in my opinion. But before we jump into this episode and I'm gonna talk about the ego and a way that you can use it positively and then I'm gonna talk about a way that you can stop the ego from getting in your way. Before I get to that in this episode, I wanted to frame the conversation with a quote, like I always do. And this one comes from The Rock. Yes, Dwayne Johnson. Check your ego at the door. The ego can be the greatest success inhibitor. It can kill opportunities and it can kill success. And I agree with that. And I agree with that. But the juxtaposition to that, or the paradox to that is, use your ego well. Because if you don't use your ego well, it will inhibit success, it will kill opportunities, and it will not let you grow. So that's what I want to talk about here, because this idea that the ego is the enemy is quite popular. But we are smarter than that. We don't want to see our ego as the enemy. We want to use the ego like we would use a pawn or a knight or a queen when we're playing chess. We want to use it to win the game. We want to use it to win success but not to get in the way of success. Something that I've always thought about with ego is that I think your ego is kind of your past in a way. It, it, it holds on to all your past hurts. It holds on to all your past wins, your losses, and all your anchors. And sometimes when you're trying to get better, your past is clashing with your future. You may have heard of the term ego backlash. It's when you go on a spiritual journey, you have a big paradigm shift, but then your old habits, your old routines, your old ego pull you back and like, no, we're not going to allow you to be different. We're going to sabotage you now and you're going to have an ego backlash. Now, that's a really, really light, shallow description of an ego backlash. But your ego loves all your bad or comfortable habits. From your thought patterns to wasting hours on social media, watching movies, whatever you do to sabotage yourself, whatever you do to create comfort around yourself, your ego loves those habits. When you try to change, your ego says no. But often, the ego voice is hard to hear. And um, what do I mean about that? Well, why, why can't you hear your ego? Because you are your ego. And if you don't give yourself the time to hear the ego, you're not going to be able to split it apart from who you are. Let me dive into that a bit deeper. You overwhelm yourself with worry, busy work, and distraction. The ego is playing 4D chess with you right now. You're playing hungry hippos, basically. <laughs> you're snapping up any form of distraction that comes your way. You're you're smashing away at, at, at all the keys on the keyboard, or you're banging away at hungry hippos, where your ego is 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 like a savant playing chess with you. It's distracting you. 
and you need to stop playing hungry hippos with your with your mind uh, and you need to start to become the bobby fisher of your mind elite chess master you need to start playing mental chess you need to start leading your ego in the right direction learning to play mental chess spending more time alone is the biggest shift you can make to allow yourself to grow simple yes very hard to build as a habit it is why because your ego doesn't want you to reflect think and be with your inner source. It doesn't want you to connect to the bigger version of yourself. It doesn't want you to take bigger risks. It doesn't want you to download information from the source code so you can actually grow as a person. Your ego is good at this game. It's been doing it your whole life. Every time you've had a, a negative experience, any time that you've tried something and failed, and then you haven't tried again, your ego will hold on to that. And when you try to do something new, it will remind you consciously or subconsciously. But when you take the time to not fight your ego, but to observe your ego, to journal about the things, to meditate on the things, you will see improvements quickly. Even a couple of minutes alone in the morning before you work can make a significant difference. It has for me in the past. I was kind off or kind off. No, I was. <laughs> I was an angry young man. But what meditation allowed me to do, it taught me to create a gap between my thoughts, my actions, or my words. There is a gap that I'm able to tap into. Am I elite at it? Am I a Jedi Knight at it? Am I a super monk? No, but over time, and over the years of practicing meditation, mindfulness, and journaling, it has helped me create a bit of space. So instead of jumping straight into overwhelmed distraction for the day, I started being more intentional. So my first chess moves each day were smarter. I wasn't going straight into the, the chess board and moving lots of stuff and just opening myself up for a quick checkmate from my ego. I was being more intentional. One move at a time, thinking what was, what was going on, thinking about my next steps, thinking two, three moves ahead, all because I'd meditated, journaled, and set up my day with a little bit more of intention, got a view from the balcony, and I tried to follow that intention for the rest of the day. And then when you start doing that more often, when you start following that intention more often, you do tap into momentum. And momentum is massive for success. It's massive for improving your self-performance. It's massive for life. I believe that we as humans, we as beings on this earth, should be expanding till the day we die. And the reason why I say that is science now tells us that the universe is expanding all the time. So the natural state of the universe, the natural state of the environment that we find ourselves in is always expanding. So is it not fighting the universe? Is it not fighting the natural state of things if we ourselves are not expanding? expanding our freedoms of time, money, relationships, purpose, expanding the things that we can take on, the risks that we can take on, the mountains that we can climb. If we are not expanding, I personally believe we are fighting the natural law of the universe. But when you tap into that momentum and you start expanding, you start stacking your wins. You start seeing how your ego was pulling you into overwhelm and distraction. So you've got to be aware of this. You can't let your ego react to everything and get angry, upset, distracted, overwhelmed all the time when things happen to you in your environment. You know, if you have some underlying emotions, fears and doubts about your direction, about your life, about what you're doing each day, your ego will remind you of those quite often and then distract you and then you might not be able to take action on your new direction. But with the momentum of meditating, journaling, observing yourself, taking the time to reflect, going for long walks, whatever that is for you to do your mindfulness and your meditation, you can see how the ego was moving you away from your source, was moving you away from your goals. Now, when you start to take control of your ego, when you start to use it in the right manner, you make the right moves. You now understand why the ego was distracting you with busy work and overwhelm and bad habits because it was hiding you or protecting you from the emotions of actually trying something new. It was hiding you from the 
uncomfort zone. It didn't want you to get out there and hurt yourself or fail, you know, emotionally, mentally, with air quotes, which I'm doing right now, which obviously you can't see <laughs> because it's a podcast. But your ego doesn't want you to feel bad. Your ego doesn't want you to fail. So it's going to try to protect you from doing big things in your life, you know, with distraction and overwhelm and being in the storm and watching Netflix and watching whatever it is that you do when you're when you're feeling a bit sad and depressed. You know, eating food is a great example of overeating. You know, when you actually start to face your fears, face your doubts, and you, you make some key moves to improve your desired levels in life, you know, you're, you're leveling up because you deserve it. Everybody deserves success. You'll start to understand that you don't want to hear the ego tell you otherwise. You don't want the ego to be a person in the peanut gallery saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. So you need ways to regulate it. And that's when you start really playing mental chess with the ego, with your ego. Using the power of reflection, planning, and intention, you can defeat the ego, control the ego. You leave overwhelm and distraction behind you. You and your business start to grow. Again, you start to flow towards things, and and you win this round. You win this round of chess. But, big, big but, it's time now to face the next ego grand master. You've got to get ready to move again. Do you think it just finishes at one game of chess? No, 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 no. The ego will always reappear. Every time you try to level up, every time you try to do something new, every time that you're pushing yourself forward with your self-performance journey, with your business growth journey, you will keep facing grandmasters, your own grandmaster, you, as an ego, you'll keep facing more and more intense, larger, more important chess games. And this is the point where I want to kind of switch back to my opening statement about the ego is not the enemy. The ego is your playing partner. If you didn't have the ego to play games of chess with, to try bigger things, you wouldn't be able to grow in life. We'd just be sitting around all day, plugged into the matrix, going to average jobs, doing average things, being worker bees. We wouldn't want to aspire to be anything else because it's our ego that is driving us to aspire to be bigger and better. So our ego is useful in that sense. And that's why I don't believe the ego is the enemy. I believe the ego is a tool we need to use and it's also our playing partner. We need to defeat it, but we need to keep defeating it at chess. We need to find out its moves, how it's operating, and we need to find ways around it. But without that ego, without that drive, would we be trying to be more successful without that ego? I don't think we would be, in my opinion. I, I don't think removing the ego completely is going to be super helpful if you're trying to grow a business, if you're trying to be better. You need a little bit of that ego. You need a little bit of that drive. So I want to go through seven ways that you can kind of operate, you know, use the the ego as a tool and not be controlled by your ego, not to fight your ego, but to play with it in a way that you can use it to your benefit. You can lead yourself and lead your ego to help you succeed in your life and in your business. So let's go through these seven ideas or strategies so you can use your ego in a better way. Okay, so the first one is pretty straightforward and pretty blunt. Stop getting offended. Honestly, when you read something, when you hear something, stop getting offended. The behavior of others isn't a reason to get upset. And that is a big ego trap for a lot of people, online in particular, but in life. If you let things offend you, it only weakens your energy. There's a fantastic Christopher Hitchens quote that always makes me laugh. Those who are determined to be offended will discover a provocation somewhere. I think Ricky Gervais talks about this in one or two of his stand-ups. You know, if you want to be offended, you will find offense in absolutely everything. And on Twitter, on the YouTube, or anywhere where I, I hang out, even on LinkedIn, where I hang out, you get a lot of people get offended over reading words that are said by other people. And these aren't even words that are divisive or negative. Your ego is convincing you that the world should be how you want it to be. It doesn't work like that. 
the world is just what it is. You can't really influence the external. You can't influence how people show up online or, or in the world. And, and as long as these people aren't directly attacking people in a vulgar, racist, condescending way and causing some type of uh, mental or emotional harm, you know what, you shouldn't get offended by it. And, and even if they are causing that kind of harm, getting offended by it and getting upset in your day isn't going to be helpful. So, you know, please stop it. Please stop getting offended because that's the game your ego wants you to play. The game, it wants to suck you out of the, the drive that you have. It wants to suck your attention away and it wants you caught in the storm of reacting to things. So you don't want to be, get offended. Just stop getting offended all the time. The next point I want to talk about, and this was a hard one for me to get my head wrapped around as, as a young angry man, was you don't need to win all the time. That's point two. Your ego loves to divide the world into winners and losers, but that's just not simply true. Because ultimately, winning is impossible all the time. You can't win all the time. If you were playing a sports game, soccer match, let's say, and you're playing in a season and you win 60-70% of your games, but you lose 30% of them, are you a loser because you lost 30% of the games you played? No, you're not. You, you, you won more than you lost, but you have to take a defeat once in a while, especially playing sports, and life isn't different. Are you a loser because there's somebody younger, faster, smarter, healthier, someone making more money than you? No, no, you're not. This idea that the ego has that we're all winners and losers and there's just this line between it is absolute BS. Don't let your ego make you feel worthless or insignificant when you have a loss because you're not. You're 100% not. Let go of needing to win by not agreeing that the opposite of winning is losing. That's the ego sphere, not yours. The opposite of winning is not losing. If you're learning, if you're growing, you will fail at probably 90% of the things that you do if you're growing a business. Of the little pivots and the little ideas and the little tweets or social media posts or emails or videos that you do to try to bring customers in, probably 90% of those things that you do as a business owner, marketing wise, aren't going to bring you in the massive results that you want. But to get that 10% that fills your business up, that brings you in lots of money, you've got to do the other 90%. You've got to do all the failures. You've got to try. You've got to grow. That's why, in my opinion, there is no real losing. Because when you lose, you're not fully out of the game of business or in life. You're learning something. And you're going to adapt from that and you're going to grow. The only time you truly lose in life is when you die, because there is no coming back from that. There is no second attempt. There is no pivot. But every other part of life, you win, you bring results in, or you learn from those results. You adapt from those results. So this idea that your ego has that when you don't get the results, the desired results that you wanted, that you're losing is complete and utter bullshit. So get rid of it from your mind. Get rid of the idea that you have to win all the time. Following on from not winning all the time or this need of wanting to win all the time that your ego has, you've also got to accept that you're not right all the time in all conversations and in everything that you do. You're not right all the time. Your ego is the source of a lot of conflict and disagreement in your world because it wants you to be right by making other people wrong. Similar to winning and losing in a sense. Letting go of your need to be right is very powerful. Even letting people win even though you know they're wrong. You know, that's a huge one. It's a brilliant way to end an argument online or in real life when someone says, no, this is it. This is this is what's happening. This is what's going on. And you just say, oh, OK, OK, if, if that's what you say, it is OK. And then that person just stops arguing because they're like, well, you're not going to challenge me anymore. You're like, No, I'm, I'm not going to get into that argument with you. If you say that's what it is, that's what it is. And I've done that a lot online. I've done it a lot in real life because I don't want to be in that conversation anymore. I don't want to have an ego fight with somebody because I have a different opinion or I have different facts around a certain situation. So I always ask myself this question quickly. Is it a big issue? Will this matter in five minutes? No. Will this matter in five years? No. Then back down and move on. Just agree with the person and move on. 
if you're open to being wrong sometimes, or if you're open to walking away from a conversation by removing the need to be right, you can flex your humility, you can flex your growth, you, your ego no longer blocks you, blocks your path. You save yourself so much time and energy so you can focus on the more important things. So those two points that kind of feed into each other, not always needing to win everything and not always having the feeling that you have to be right will save you a lot of time and allows you to outmaneuver your ego on the chessboard of life. The next point I want to talk about is don't be superior. Your ego can be like that sometimes. I know I've definitely felt like that a few times in my life when I had a job title or I had money or I had things going well for me in life. A little bit of like ego would come in. I'd feel a little bit more superior. And it's a really, really, really dangerous trap because there's always somebody younger, faster, better than you. We, we talked about that already. But authenticity isn't about being better than someone else you know it's about being better than who you used to be stay focused on your growth be humble and help others i think that's a, a great line i'm going to say it again stay focused on your growth be humble and help others with success your ego will want to tell you that you're better than everybody else that you're better than some people with a smaller following or making less money and that's just complete bullshit while you might be more successful than others currently there is no need to start acting like a dick telling people how successful you are. Because at the end of the day, the only person that you are more successful than is the person you used to be. That is the only benchmark, the only competitive, direct competitive person you should be being more superior to or, or competing against. Now, I love competition. I love playing sports. I do look at other creators around me I do look at other business people and do I want their success a hundred percent but do I see them as ego competitors no I see them as inspiration I see what they're doing I take notes from them I look what they're doing I try to imitate what they're doing and I try to grow my own business and I'm always constantly trying to beat the person who I used to be to get better to grow to become the future version of myself faster empathy always defeats ego in my humble opinion <laughs> the next point i want to talk about is knowing when to stop this is a this is a trap for many people because the ego is never satisfied no matter how much you achieve no matter how much you acquire in your life your ego will always want more you'll find yourself in a perpetual state of striving and reaching for pointless new goals because your ego is saying i want more i want more Making it so you never truly arrive at any of your goals or destinations because you keep moving the goalposts forward. And this is this is tough. But the thing is, you've already arrived. You've already succeeded. When you detach from the need for more and you start realizing that you've already got a lot, that your ego is playing some type of game with you. It's distracting you again. It's telling you to go after these pointless more, 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 another zero in the bank account, uh, another business, uh, you know, another 50,000 followers, another $50,000 this month, whatever that is for you. The ego will trap you into that. But when you let go of all those goals and targets, when you let go of all of that, you actually find it easier to get those things. Those things will just come to you. I've experienced this in my own life. Because when I became more grateful and I was using the mindfulness strategies that I talked about earlier on in the podcast and I was becoming more satisfied just with my daily being, with my daily life, things just happened. Business opportunities, growth opportunities, life opportunities just happened because I was operating out of already being enough, already having enough. And I have fallen into that trap after that. It is something that I've done a few times, even in the last year or so, two years or so running my own business where I get attached to these numbers and I get attached to these goals. And then when I don't get them, my, my ego and I'm upset. But the months and the weeks that I've had the most success, I've let go of those things. Those things have happened because I've not been in a, a cycle of needing more, wanting more, chasing things. And that's the best way to operate in my opinion. The next point I want to talk about, and it kind of rolls on from this one, it rolls on from all of them, is understanding that you're not your reputation or your achievements. 
when you're striving to be successful and your ego is driving you forward and you're getting all these rewards and you're getting all these job titles or, or, or money and achievements, you know, you've got to realize you're not those awards. You're not those job titles. You're not your degree. You're not your master's degree. You're not your PhD. You're, you're not those things. While they are impressive to have accomplishments and we should all have accomplishments and we should all be proud of them and we should all be grateful for them and we should all celebrate them when they happen. You shouldn't rest on them. They shouldn't just become something that is your personality. Because within a couple of years, those things don't mean that much anymore. They might mean something in the moment, but five or 10 or 15 years later, those accomplishments don't mean anything, really. The less you take credit for your accomplishments or how people recognize them, the more you are free to achieve bigger things in your life. When your ego attaches who you are to your achievements, you might find it hard to grow because if somebody challenges the way that you think, if somebody challenges your bias towards your, your, your rewards or your experiences or your certificates or whatever you have in the past and, and you've stuck yourself in this world where everything you've done is the way that it's going to go forward and someone somebody challenges that, because your ego is so wrapped up in that, you'll get offended by it, going all the way back to the first point. And, and you might find it hard to grow. You might find it hard to adapt, to change, because you're resisting new ideas. Now, I, I've heard and read things that, you know, about this happens quite a lot within the scientific community because somebody based their whole life on a type of research and then someone comes along with new research which challenges that and they get very upset because they've built their whole career on a certain type of research and now new research says that it's not true. Now, I could go even further back and we could talk about Galileo that when he discovered that the earth wasn't the center of the universe, the church was like, blasphemy, blasphemy, that, 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 that goes against what we believe. And the church and the other scientists around at that time had a really hard time taking on factual new information because of their egos, because they had wrapped themselves up in what they thought was right, and their ego wouldn't allow them to see things from a different angle. Obviously now, thousands of years on from that, we know Galileo was right, and that the church and the other scientists at that time were wrong. But this happens all the time. This happens all the time, even in, in micro ways. We attach ourselves to our own experiences. And then when those experiences are challenged, we let our ego take over. So we need to be less like that. We need to be more cool, more open and be helpful. And, and when we hear a different opinion, be open to examining it. Be open to seeing whether it actually is the right opinion and whether you can pivot with it. If it's a whole bunch of bullshit and you discover that the way that you previously thought was the right way, then stick with the right way. But just don't blindly let your ego push away things because they challenge your reputation or your achievements. Don't be don't be that person. Yeah, don't be the church to Galileo. <laughs> so jumping into the final point that I want to cover on the 31st episode of the SBS podcast, talking about the ego not being your enemy, but being a tool, being a chess player that you want to defeat or learn from and grow. The last thing that I want to talk about, the last point that's going to help you is to let go of control. And this idea is pulled directly from the Stoics. So we started talking a little bit about the Stoics and Ryan Holiday at the start of the podcast, and we're finishing it off talking about this idea from Epictetus. The ego wants to control and micromanage everything that you do. It wants you distracted and it wants to, you to micromanage everything. And as Epictetus said, there is only one way to happiness and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of your will. It helps if you regularly remind yourself and your ego of what is in your control and what is not in your control. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. Going back to the meditation, the mindfulness, the journaling, the going for walks that is going to help you not let your ego drive your day. This is the same process. This is the same idea. It's difficult not to think that you can control it more than you actually control, but your ego will always want to come first. It will want to be the main number one player, but it's not. You are the main number one player. It is 
with you. It is a tool that you can use. You can play chess against it. You can learn from it. So you can outthink it and outmaneuver it. You can use it to help you strive towards bigger and better things in your life. But you have to control it and move it around your mental chessboard so you can succeed in life. And that was the 31st episode of the SPS podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. If you have any questions at all, you can hit me up on my socials at Steve Timoney on Twitter. That's at S-T-E-V-E-T-I-M-O-N-E-Y. Or you can slide on over to my website, which is stephentimoney.com. But the Stephen is spelled with a P-H-E-N. So that's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-T-I-M-O-N-E-Y.com. And you can check out all my blog posts there. You can check out every episode of my podcast. And you can also check out everything that I do coaching-wise with my one-on-one clients. Thank you very much for joining me again. I really appreciate you listening all the way through to this part of the episode. And we will talk to you in the next one. Make it a good one.